We were struggling like hard as fuck, so we both wanted to give up and then start doing some illegal shit. Before Ski Mask the Slump God dropped tracks like Take a Step Back, Life is Short, Baby Wipe, and Catch Me Outside. Getting co-signs from the likes of Missy Elliott and Designer and collaborating with artists like Lil Pump, Lil Peep, Lil Tracy, Lil Uzi Vert, and of course, Triple X. For Ski Mask would feud with Rob Stone leading to angry tweets, stabbings, and Ski Mask getting jumped on stage. As the Slump God was raised in South Florida and was encouraged to work on his pen from a young age by his father who was a rapper himself. Music was always a big part of his life, but his come up was rough and he wouldn't take his first serious steps into the rap game until he met his musical soulmate in juvenile detention. From there, he'd start his first musical collective, Very Rare, and even get the name inked on his face. From there, he'd move on to form members only, but considering the tad, I gotta hope Very Rare is still somehow active. Anyhow, through his come up, he developed unique sound, rock influenced rap, paired with mic skills that he describes like this. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm bringing shit back. Like, I'm not lyrical, but I'm lyrical. What's going on, guys? My name's Mike Fulcretton, documenting the life and career of Ski Mask, the slump god prior to fame, here for you on Before They're Famous. Now, you guys have been requesting this video for a very long time, clogging up the comments. I appreciate all your input. We've also done a video on Triple X, and we've done a top five on Ski Mask. I plan on interviewing the guy in the future. We did exchange numbers, but now I'm waiting to hear back from him. And it's been a while. Let me know who you want me to document next. Now let's jump into this bio. Really and truly, my name is Ski Master Slump Guy. You feel me? I came from Broward County. Um, really and truly, ain't nothing else to say about myself unless give me a chance my nigga I'm spitting. Ski Mask the Slump God was born Stokely Clevin Goldburn on April 18th 1996. He is of Jamaican ancestry and grew up with four siblings in Fort Lauderdale Florida bouncing between his mother and father's house. Shit, shit was rough bro on us. Parents, parents are some fuck niggas. That's what I gotta say. <laughs> My mom don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> we flexing on them though. Life wasn't always easy with both parents struggling with their own issues. It wasn't totally hard because your parents is there, but your parents is not totally there for like either one of us. Music was always a big part of his childhood. When he was living with his mother and visiting grandma, they'd always be bumping Jamaican music. It's always Jamaican music, so all the old Jamaican tunes, you put it on, I'm gonna sing along. I have no choice because it's always it's like stuck in my head. On top of that, Ski Mask's dad was a rapper and wanted his son to follow in his footsteps, so he pushed him to write rhymes from an early age. It was crazy. I really didn't want to either. But I'm happy he did now. <laughs> sure enough, Ski Mask realized early on that rap could offer him a future, and recently he told Double XL it was either make this shit work or die trying. But despite his father's early encouragement, Ski Mask would not be spitting fire for some time. While music was in his blood, he claims he was no prodigy when he first got started. Before I started doing music, I was ass as fuck. <laughs> well, his career would really take off after meeting his most frequent collaborator, XXX Tentacion, Ski Mask first developed his talents prior to that meeting. He stated that he continued to write raps, but never spit that. And according to Double XL, he would also be freestyling with neighborhood friends. Diamonds on loop, they loop, so big it look like a hooli hoop. They trying to lock me in pigeon coop, even if so I would chop the roof. Ski Mask would also develop his unique sound as a result of his diverse musical influences. He grew up listening to Busta Rhymes, Missy Elliott, Nelly, The Wu-Tang Clan, Ludacris, and Lil Wayne. He also listened to Fabulous, Method Man, Red Man, Cameron, Jim Jones, and Hurricane Chris. He often cited J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar as artists who he likes a lot, even though they are very different than himself. He also named Timberland as his favorite producer. Timberland is my favorite producer. But Ski Mask has never limited his listening to hip hop. To this day, he listens to a wide variety of musical styles and genres like heavy metal, indie, grunge, ska, and pop. The only thing I don't really listen to and I probably still would listen to is country. And he's got a lot of favorites from outside the world of rap. A group called Portugal The Man Band, Sublime. This is a song, I forgot the name of the group. That's one of my favorite songs. It's like where angels deserve to die or some shit like that. I think, I, th I think you mean System of Down. Ski Mask's career would ironically begin to crystallize after his life hit a serious bump in the road. We met in jail. We met in jail. In 2014, he was sent to Broward Juvenile Detention Center for possession of marijuana after getting caught with just $10 worth of weed. 
It's pretty messed up to get arrested for such a small amount of weed, but on top of that, Ski Mask said he was arrested while he was high on shrooms, and even fell asleep while they were booking him. But once in prison, he would eventually meet, just say, Dwayne Onfroy, better known by his stage name, XXXTetasia, who was in on gun and robbery charges. On Ski Mask's birthday, X gave him an extra cookie. For my birthday, for real, because it's not like they're going to give you a birthday cake, so yeah, but nah, he was my friend in there. That's, that's really, that's really nice, that's sweet. The two became fast friends and passed their time together rapping. We was in there for like 30 days together. So we were just in like the day room. Say this is like the day room and there's like a whole bunch of chairs. We're just beating on the chairs, just rapping and shit. According to Ski Mask, both artists learned from each other. X taught Ski Mask to be more aggressive and confident in his rapping. And Ski taught X to have a smoother, more natural flow. The two made plans to get together after they both got out. But at first, it wasn't to start putting music together. We made plans to connect with each other to first hit licks like Rob Houses, brother. Thankfully, when they finally got together on the outside, they kept each other focused on music rather than crime. Ski, like, is the one that calms me down, kind of like, even like the other day, like a nigga pulled a strap out and I was gonna beat his ass and then Ski, like, <laughs> Ski was keeping me calm. Ski was grabbing me, like, telling me to calm down and shit. Ski Mask formed the Very Rare Collective with X and he began to bubble with his first official song, Catch Me, dropped on SoundCloud in 2015. The same year he formed a new collective with X, this time called Members Only, and they released their first two mixtapes, Member Only Volume 1 and 2. A third volume of Members Only would drop two years later in 2017. In the meantime, he released his solo mixtape, Drowning Designer, in 2016, which featured songs like his Lil Pump collab, Where's the Blow, and his massively popular Take a Step Back. With his music bubbling and his SoundCloud catching fire, other artists were taking notice. He received numerous co-signs, and Designer even invited Ski Mask onto his outlet tour in 2017. While a promising opportunity, the tour would also lead to his ongoing beef with Rob Stone. To Rob Stone, the problem started on day one of the tour, when Ski Mask started shaking hands with fans in the middle of Rob's song. Then during Stone's hometown stop in San Diego, Ski Mask arrived very late and refused to get off the stage when it was time for Rob to perform. This led to some Twitter beef between Rob Stone and Ski Mask, as well as X. So then when Ski Mask was performing on April 10th at the Fonda in LA, Rob Stone's goons jumped Ski Mask and beat him from stage to the street. Pretty rough, but according to Ski, a member of his crew was stabbed in the mouth. Soon after, both Rob Stone and Ski Mask would be off the outlet tour, and needless to say, future tours would be careful to avoid putting both Ski Mask and Rob Stone on the same lineup. While this would allow the heat between Ski and Rob to cool off a bit, Ski Mask would also continue to have a bit of trouble with the law. On August 2nd, 2016, he was arrested in Fort Lauderdale for driving with a suspended license and in connection to a robbery, but was later released on bail, which cost him a whopping $10,600. But despite the setback at some point along the way, Ski Mask would also meet his manager, Solomon Sounds, who I have to assume put him in touch with some major labels. Ski Mask put out his debut commercial project, his mixtape, You Will Regret, in 2017, with Universal Music Group. Ski Mask would go on to ink a deal with Republic Records in May of 2017, and his debut studio album with the label is expected to drop with that label in 2018. As for the rest of the story, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCrudden. Thanks for requesting this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit me up in the comments down below on who you want me to document next. Two other videos are right here that you guys may enjoy. See you guys in another video. If you're a Christian, it means like your guardian angel is watching you, but if you're not really into Christian, like Christianity is like, um, it means that you're, you're your own God. <laughs>